This video is going to cover what I thought about the engineering curriculum before college versus what I actually experienced. Basically, I'm taking a page from Engineer Truth and doing a reality versus expectations, but I wanted to give you guys an idea, especially for those who haven't started college yet, about what it was at least like for me in my school and major, although this will apply to many other people. So let's get into it. First of all, I thought there was one path for my engineering discipline. I was an electrical engineer and I thought it was literally just electrical engineering until I found out that this was not true, which you should know if you follow this channel. I did major in electrical engineering, but I could concentrate in things like wireless communications, power engineering, electronics, controls, embedded systems, and so on. Everyone came out of school with some specialty, which the next person might not know much about. Many people ask me how do you actually declare a concentration, and at my school you didn't actually declare one with the university, it was very unofficial. You simply chose from a long list of electives, whichever ones you found most interesting. I chose the ones in wireless communications, but also some others. I was required to take at least three, but everyone chose their own mix of what they were interested in. So on my diploma it just says electrical engineering, but on my resume I specified my area of interest. And this goes for most other majors, but basically every electrical engineering major took the exact same classes up until around their third or fourth year, then they could choose from that huge list of electives, and that's what diversified us. And some majors like civil engineering branch off so much that one person, let's say the structural concentration, would have no clue what someone in let's say the geotechnical concentration would be working on because they become so different. Now moving on, when it came to labs, I thought I would be building much more advanced labs early on. I remember being very curious about this before college, but what happened was to begin, some of the labs were pretty interesting, but some were very basic just because I didn't know very much yet. So nothing in my first few years looked like this at all. We were connecting basic circuits with things like resistor boxes and measuring voltage and current to learn about equipment and all the basics. But that was the only purpose. The circuits didn't actually do anything besides have current moving through them. I didn't actually use that circuit to make anything for a while. However, in my first programming class, which I had no experience in beforehand by the way, by the end of it I programmed a Sudoku solver that could solve an unsolved Sudoku that was input, and I thought this was really fun. In another programming class, my second year, I got to program a 7th segment display to go through the numbers 0 through 9, which was also really cool. Even though this wasn't some super advanced project, making something work like this was a lot of fun. But the coolest labs I did, like building a radio receiver or a lux meter that detects light in a room that actually had practical applications, was mostly done at the end of my third year as well as my fourth year. Some of you may do more interesting labs early on, but for me it took some time to work my way up. Now this next part is a big one. Going into college, I thought by the end of four years, I would know pretty much everything I needed to go into the workforce and know what I was doing on any electrical based project. And yeah, this was not true. I was overly optimistic at the time. So I need to stress this. Undergrad for really any engineering major is very broad. You don't become an expert in anything really. You develop more of the foundations and expertise comes more in grad school and a PhD or as you move up in your career. And here's what I mean by this. As an electrical engineer, I took a lot of classes covering many topics. I took a class on power systems, basic circuit analysis, digital design, embedded systems, wireless communications, and many more. And all of those classes were 10 weeks for me. So if you look at, let's say, the wireless communications class, there were 10 weeks of various topics. Maybe one of the weeks I learned about amplifiers, then the next was about mixers, and so on. But I frequently had teachers tell me that you could spend an entire career just designing one of these. Like you could design and optimize amplifiers as your career. Yet I learned it for a few days in one class, which was just one quarter out of my entire college education. And this could be true for any class. So when you go out into the workforce and you're on a project with someone who's been designing something that specific for 20 years, can you see how much of a knowledge gap there will be? You will have a background for sure and will be able to help with a project, and obviously that's why engineers can get jobs with just a bachelor's, but there's so much more to learn, and it's another reason why engineering jobs get better with time. Now you don't have to spend your career on something that specific, that was never something that interested me, but I mean there are people out there who do this kind of stuff. And again, getting a master's and a PhD, or just working your way up at your job and learning everything you can, are just some of the ways you'll achieve that mastery of what you find interesting. Now moving on, these next topics will be less specific to engineering, but are some things I encountered in college. So one is going into university, I thought there would be no required homework. I don't know why, but I thought professors only cared about exams and finals. 
but actually most of my major classes required homework and it usually counted for about 10% of our grade. Nothing big, but it was there. Also in some classes that homework was graded for right answers just like a test. In some classes they kind of just looked for completion, and there were some in between where maybe they graded a few questions randomly and the rest were for completion. Then when it came to tests, I thought there would always be some kind of curve. I heard that classes would have an average of like 40% on a test, and then they would curve the test a lot. But this didn't happen as much as I thought it would. Many tests did have that low average, and it was curved, because the teacher was known for giving really hard exams. But lots had an average of something like a C, and your score was as it is. Not every teacher made tests so that everyone failed, but I did hear plenty of stories where that did happen, it just wasn't as frequent as I expected. And adding on to this, I didn't know, at least at my school, that pluses and minuses count. As in a B plus is different from a B is different from a B minus in terms of GPA. I know this won't be true at every school and especially in other countries, but for me and plenty of other schools I've heard of, this is true. Also going into college, I didn't think I'd need to take as many general ed classes as I did. I took 11 general ed courses over the course of my college career, which is basically one per quarter for all four years, but I took two in one quarter a few times to get them over with. These included English, technical writing, a speech class, history, music theory, philosophy, psychology, and so on. These are easier and just something you have to get through, but personally I was really bored in most of these and just tried to pass. Most people like the easiness of them, but I was more concerned with my other classes. Then going back to the engineering curriculum, for most of my lecture classes, for my major that is, they came with labs, but not every single one did. I usually had one lab per week for the classes that did have one. The lab class would go for three hours, but we would usually finish before that time and were able to just leave. Then each lab came with a required pre-lab and a lab report. Pre-labs typically involve some calculations you may expect to measure in the lab, or a computer simulation of the circuit we are making to get the values that way. Lab reports were often somewhere between 5 and 10 pages if you included cover page and table of contents, but some were closer to even 20 because there were some times where a lot of graphs and plots were needed. The report consisted of things like explaining what values you got, why they might have been off, and so on. And all of these labs were typically done in groups, I rarely ever did a lab by myself. And like I said in another video, I was not studying 30 to 40 hours per week like a lot of colleges advertise. Although there were many weeks where I was studying this much, like around midterms or finals or for big projects, it wasn't like this every week. I did have time to relax, go to the gym, and more. I've gotten comments of people saying they do study for over 40 hours per week, almost every week, so as you can see this will differ for everyone, but this was just my personal experience. Also I remember asking upperclassmen how many all-nighters they pulled, because I thought that was a common thing to do in college. But personally, I can remember almost every time I pulled an all-nighter, because it didn't happen that much. They mostly happened because I procrastinated, so make sure to stay on top of your work. So that was a little of my experience. I know there will be people watching who have totally different stories, but if you have no clue what you're in for, this was at least some of what I went through. If you liked this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.